This is my impression of a floating shelf. It's not a very good one, but if you want to know how you're supposed to do floating shelves, watch this video. I'm going to show you the right way to do floating shelves by taking you inside a client's home, taking down a floating shelf that was done completely wrong, and putting it back up the way that it should be done. So watch the video, you'll learn everything you need to know. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Do it. All right, so we already finished our box floating shelves in the other room. Those are good to go. I actually just put some primer on them. So while those are drying, I thought I'd come in here and show you guys how to do regular floating shelves. Now I'm not installing a new floating shelf today. What I'm actually doing is fixing an old floating shelf. Now a lot of you guys might have shelves like this in your house. They sell a lot of DIY kits online that you can do your own floating shelf, comes with the shelf and the hardware. The issue you can see is the hardware is not very good, as you can tell from this shelf right here. So let me pull this off and show you what we're working with right now. So this is what the store-bought hardware typically looks like. It's these really flimsy brackets. Problem is, it's hard because the shelf is usually pre-drilled, so it's hard to get those to land right on studs. So you don't want to hold a floating shelf up with drywall anchors. It's just not a good idea. You can't put a lot of weight on it. I like making shelves that you could jump on, do a backflip off if you wanted to. And that's the goal here. So we're going to take these off and we're going to use some different brackets. Let me show you what those look like. Now, you can do floating shelves in two different applications. Sometimes I put floating shelves up over tile and sometimes I put them up straight on drywall. If you're going to do them on tile, you actually want to use this bracket here. I have these custom fabricated for me. Basically, it's just a piece of half inch round stock welded onto a quarter inch plate. If you're gonna put it on tile, you put the bracket up first, then lay your tile over the top. Find the studs, you put this right on the stud, you got two nice beefy screws anchored in nice and solid. But, the issue is you're not always doing it over tile. Sometimes people want them right on drywall. So I also have these fabricated for me, the much smaller plate. This isn't quite as sturdy, but it's very strong still. The nice thing about this is with the inch and a half plate, you can hide the bracket behind the shelf because you have to still remove a little bit of drywall so you can put this directly against the stud. You could technically put this over the drywall. The issue there is with enough force, drywall is actually going to compress and your um, bracket's going to get loosened, which isn't a good idea. So if you can, you want to put it right on the stud. So first we got to get these old brackets off of here so we got a clean surface to work with. Now, unlike the store-bought bracket system with the shelf, where the shelf comes pre-drilled to fit the brackets, we're actually going to put our brackets up first, make sure they're on studs, then measure the shelf and drill the shelf to directly fit the brackets. This way it's super strong. You don't have to worry about moving your shelf around to find a stud. All right, so now that we found our studs, we're actually gonna use our bracket as a template to trace around so we only remove the very minimum amount of drywall that we can because remember the ultimate goal is to hide your bracket, the cutout drywall, everything with your shelf. The other thing you want to watch for when you're doing this is you want your brackets obviously to be level so that your shelf is level. So the best thing to do is to do one bracket first, put a level on it, and use the level to determine where your other bracket's going to go up and down on the wall. So we're going to cut this drywall out, put the bracket on, then we'll make sure it's nice and level before we mark out the other one. So you can see we cut out a hole exactly where the stud is so that's going to sit perfectly on the stud so when we secure that down it's not going to be able to go anywhere you also want to make sure that you use a nice long screw you don't want to use a little one inch screw because it could pull right out of there so two by fours or three and a half inches wide i like to use at least a two inch screw to sit it in there nice and sturdy You can see that's oh, super strong. 
All right, so with our first bracket in, it's time to throw a level on there. We already got our other stud marked out right over here. So we're just gonna make sure that these brackets are perfectly level. Double check. Yep, that's right where our stud is. Trace this other bracket. Now we're gonna cut this drywall out, throw this one up there, and then I'm gonna show you how to drill those shelves. Now that we got it cut out, before you hook it to the wall, you wanna make sure that it's level, just in case your hole's a little bit bigger than you meant to make it. But we are still dead on right there. Nice and sturdy. All right, so we got both of our brackets on there. They're nice and sturdy. We made sure they're perfectly level. Now we want to take our shelf, throw it up there, and you want to move it back and forth, get it positioned right where you want it. We're going to put it pretty much right back where it was. So make sure it's going to cover up all the old holes from the other brackets. Now, what you're going to want to do is just rotate that shelf straight up and mark right in the center of each bracket, just a little line. Just like that. So we know our brackets there and we know our brackets right there. Double check the back side. Make sure there aren't any existing holes in the shelf that we're gonna have to worry about. You don't wanna drill halfway on another hole cause that's not gonna be a tight fit. There isn't, so now we can drill these out slide it back up there all right so the drilling process isn't really that complicated lots of people get stressed out about drilling a perfectly straight hole super easy way to do it the things you're going to need a drill obviously with a half inch drill bit this one's super long because normally the shelves i do are 10 to 15 inches deep um, but you don't need one this long if you're doing a smaller shelf half inch drill bit corded drill you can use a cordless drill um, the cord corded drill just has a lot more power. Lots of times when I do floating shelves, they're solid hardwood. So the corded drill just helps get through the material. Then the thing that I have found that works the best to get your holes perfectly drilled is a doweling jig. Now most doweling jigs go up to about three eighths inches for their inserts. But if you get, this is the uh, Rockler doweling jig. If you get this one and take out the biggest insert, the hole that comes standard in the doweling jig is a half inch hole. So you can use this to perfectly line up your hole that you're gonna drill, it self centers itself, and then it also guides you into the shelf so you know you're drilling perfectly straight, left to right, side to side, so you don't have to worry about it. So the easiest way to mark your depth on your drill bit is just to put it right on the wall Make sure it's on the drywall and not inside against the plate because you need a hole deep enough for the shelf to sit down to the drywall. And then I like to bring it back, oh, like an eighth of an inch. So it's an eighth of an inch longer than it needs to be, just so you have plenty of room and you know you're gonna have enough room for that bracket to slide in there. We got our doweling jig on there. We got our drill bit marked off, so we're ready to drill our hole. Another key here is a little thing I like to call the foot clamp. I like to put the shelf on the ground and use my feety feet to hold it in place while I make my drilling. Now, you might be saying to yourself, well, wait a second, you marked the depth of the drill bit for the shelf, but you got this extra added room from the doweling jig. And you're absolutely right. You gotta start with the doweling jig, but now you got a nice pre-drilled hole so you can finish off the last little bit just with the drill. So now our hole is the right size, it's the right depth but there's one last step that I personally like to do because it makes the install way easier. 
I like to put the drill back in there and I like to rack it back and forth just a hair to open the um, hole just a little bit. Now this isn't opening the hole all the way down. When you rack the drill bit back and forth, it's just expanding it right at the start. It just helps you get it started when you start to mount it on those brackets on the wall. So that's one all drilled. Now we gotta set up the dowling jig, do the other one. All right, so now for the moment of truth. Now, it's important to know that you don't need to glue these onto the shelf. You don't need to put caulking in there or anything like that. Lots of people think they do to hold the shelf in place, but surprisingly, friction alone is gonna hold it super tight. The other thing is, if you glue it in place, you're never gonna be able to get the shelf off if you want to remove it. The only way you're gonna be able to get it off is to cut it off. So just bang it on there. The holes are gonna do their thing. The other thing you might need is a mallet. Don't be surprised if you got to beat on it a little bit to get it in place, especially at the start. Once it gets closer to the end where you marked your holes, it should slide right in there. But bang away, my friend. Bang away. This is always the trickiest part. It's getting your holes found, especially getting that first one started. So get one started, then get your other one started. Look at that. Didn't even need the mallet. All right, well you remembered what this shelf looked like before. It was pretty sad. It was drooping, you can move it around. It's still gonna have a little bit of flex to it. That's okay. Your round stock is gonna have some give to it, but it's not gonna go anywhere. You can't tell, but my feet aren't on the ground. Ugh. Super sturdy, you can pile anything you want on there. If this was gonna be in a kitchen where it was gonna have dishes and lots of stuff like that, I might throw another bracket in there just to be safe. You probably wouldn't need it. The other thing is, if it was wider, you're just gonna want longer brackets, but those can be made. Like I said, these are the brackets I like to use. Half inch round stock, welded to a quarter inch plate of steel. They sell these online. I will try and find a link and put it in the description. I know there's a company out there that makes something exactly like this. If you can't find it online, find a local steel guy. They can make these up in like two seconds. I think I pay my guy 20, $25 for a set of brackets. Not bad at all when you're thinking about the cost of a full floating shelf and you're gonna be super happy with the results. That's how I do it. Floating shelves, box shelves. Hope you get a lot out of this. Please subscribe to my channel. Comment below, ask me your questions. Have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching that video. I hope it was helpful. I hope you learned something. If you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe down below right there. It would really help me out. And leave a comment. Tell me what you liked, didn't like. It's all good. It's an open forum. I might say something rude back. If you say something rude to me, I kind of like to banter that way. But still, subscribe.